గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వెల్కమ్ టు విటియు ఈ శిక్షణ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఇన్ ద లాస్ట్ క్లాస్ వి వర్ డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ఫ్లో కంట్రోల్ వాల్స్ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ డన్ వన్ ఆర్ టూ సర్క్యూట్స్ యూజింగ్ ఫ్లో కంట్రోల్ వాల్స్ టు డెమాన్స్ట్రేట్ స్పీడ్ చేంజెస్ ఇన్ ద నిమాడిక్ సిలిండర్స్ హౌ వీ కెన్ డూ అ స్పీడ్ చేంజ్ ఇన్ ద నిమాడిక్ సిలిండర్స్ normally uh, flow control valves we have fixed closure to the actuator and we have uh, control the speed of the pneumatic uh, actuator using flow control valves in the flow control valve we have two types bidirectional flow control valves and uh, unidirectional flow control valves and we have demonstrated uh, uh, these flow control valves in the last class now in this session i will be covering about signal processing devices okay so uh, uh, which are used in pneumatic circuits maybe and and valve or valve not valve these kinds of valves are extensively used in logical operations uh, of the pneumatic circuits so i'll be taking about signal processing devices in pilot operated pneumatics signal processing devices so to meet the requirements of various conditions in pneumatic applications signal processing devices are often used the following gates or valves are used depending upon the required conditions the main valves are or gate that we call it as a shuttle valve okay which is used to uh, select one of the two input signals basically how it will work that i'll demonstrate in the next subsequent uh, slides and the other uh, valve is two pressure valve which is also called as and gate valve so the prominent valves are or gate which is referred to as shuttle valve and gate which is referred to as two pressure valve so to combine two input signals and give an output then we call them as twin pressure valve so to satisfy two conditions at the same time we may use this uh, and valve Uh, basically i'll also give you some examples uh, why it is important and the third one is not gate in the not gate it is nothing but a 3 by 2 way normally open pilot operated directional control valve used to negate the function so to up- negate the function we use this valve so i'm talking about now basic valves which are used in signal processing in pneumatic circuits the first one is or gate valve next is and gate valve and not gate valve uh, the figure shows or valve or which is also referred to as shuttle valve so uh, if you observe this shuttle valve there are 1 uh, 2 and 3 ports like this so which is uh, we call 1 1 for this because both of them are inputs ports so hence we designate them as 1 and this is the 2 is the output port so if you see the uh, valve there is a ball like thing which is there suppose if you give an input at this side that is at uh, to the right side of this so the ball will move to this side and blocks this here and the input from here will go to 2 to the output suppose if you change this input from here to here so input will be given here the ball will be pushed to the other side and the input gets connected to 2 so that means on uh, any one of the input out of this 2 is sufficient to give an output signal 2 that is why this valve is also called as r valve this or this 
you can make use of anyone. So, now I will come to why such a valves are required. For example, sometimes if the hand is tired, you can use your leg. So, that means hand or leg. So, we are saying some logic here. Why we are saying this logic? Because if the hand gets tired operating continuously in the production lines, you can make use of your uh, leg and do act the same activity uh, giving rest to your uh, the hand. So, something like that our logics are being predominantly used in certain applications. So, one of the important thing is for an example if you take a process plant kinds of thing, a rollers or the press units or a rollers, conveyors which are there. So, when you try to move from this end to the, that end, sometimes we use a uh, push buttons to start the process from either here or from there. So, that means we are using an R logic here also or we can also say one more example. So, your uh, uh, home fan buttons in the room fan buttons, the switches that we provide, sometimes we keep R. So, means we are able to operate it from the door position near the door one switch and sometimes in the bed position you can give an another from there also you can switch. So, switching on or off is made available from two locations. So, this is a common thing that to help the process to give some advantages to the process we use such logical elements in the process. In the similar manner, this can also be applied to an industry. So, for a benefit, they can use the logic. If you observe this now, the input uh, signal 1 can be applied on either side of the wall, this side or this side. So, that is the thing to get an output. Symbolically, this is represented like this. So, a small box with a two umbrellas given and a ball which is floating on either side to tell you that which is the input side and which is the output side. So, now I will demonstrate uh, such a uh, combination uh, of shuttle valve uh, in the circuit levels. So, our combination without a shuttle valve, how it works, we will understand and then I will use the shuttle valve in the circuit and we will explain how the shuttle valve will enable you to support your total uh, improved up circuits in the pneumatics. Suppose, if you, if you are not using a shuttle valve, you are not using the shuttle valve without the shuttle valve. Now, I am, I am saying without shuttle valve. If you want to without uh, uh, do without shuttle valve, we should make two input elements put parallel. So, one here and the another one here. So, this is a parallel combination here. Okay. So, you can press 1s1 or 1s2. So, that means an R logic is being constructed by taking a parallel elements like this by taking a parallel elements like this. However, if you observe this now, source is here, FRL is here, the common line input line, input line is given to two valves. So, normally closed type of valves in its normal position. If you press uh, 1 S 1 now, if you press if you press 1 S 1 now, if you press this, so 1 gets connected to 2, that means your 1 gets connected to 2 here. Okay. So, and the air will go from here in this path to this path and to this valve. So, once the signal is given to this valve, final control element, so, this changes its position and this gets connected like this. So, that means you are allowing the air to come to 
the blank end, compressed air to come into the blank end and the air inside the cylinder on the other side is vented, is vented at that point of time. So, you are going to execute the forward stroke. Suppose, if you do not, uh, return is done through a spring here in this case. If you take out this, the spring will push the valve back to its position and your cylinder will retract. So, now the suppose I do not want to use 1 S 1, I can also make use of 1 S 2. Suppose if I press 1 S 2, so that is if I press this, 1 gets connected to 2 here and in that case air will come through this valve to this and the position gets changed, this gets connected like this and air will go here and it will make forward. Suppose if you release this back, so the uh, once you take out your hand back, the spring set position will push the valve back and the retraction of the cylinder will takes place. So, that means either using 1 S 1 or 1 S 2, I am able to move it. Okay. So, this is in without using the valve, but we will see how this is, this may be a, a, a kind of a problem in some time. If you observe this figure, if you have fitted such valves, one or, one or more valves like this in parallel and you are trying to operate without a shuttle valve. So, you press 1 S 1, air from 1 to 2 gets connected, it will go to the valve also, also sometimes the, uh, the air can pass through in this passage, here in this passage. This is a uh, very, very important, air is now going to here sometime and also certain amount of air can pass through this and it can go and vent it to the atmosphere. So, this results in insufficient air here, this results in insufficient air here. So, due to that the valve may not function properly. So, one of the reason we say use a shuttle valve when you are using logics. So, our logic if you are using means use the shuttle valve. So, that may avoid such problems. So, the problem here is if you observe it, what I have I am trying to convey you is the air which is given from here may go here and some amount of air can also pass through the other path that results in a insufficient pressure or and flow on the control element side valve. So, which results in malfunction sometimes. To avoid that, if you fix up a R wall here, so that problem will get completely solved. So, now I will demonstrate if you use a shuttle valve, how that will eliminate such problems. Now, I am trying to bring shuttle valve in the middle. This is the shuttle valve which is in the middle which I am fixing. So, use of shuttle valve, I am using the shuttle valve in this input element in the middle when I try to connect an R logical configuration. So, if I use this valve, if you observe, uh, this is the valve uh, which is a shuttle valve which is fitted in the circuit uh, in the uh, uh, pneumatic circuit which has 1 S 1 and 1 S 2 as input elements. So, now what happens here is, so if you use the shuttle valve like this, so if you press 1 S 1, so air gets connected from 1 to 2, the air will go like this, this ball will go and seals on this area. So, this gets blocked here, blocked here and the air will move from here to here. So, the no air goes to this side. So, this uh, gives complete air to the control element, hence your actuator functions 
perfectly without any malfunctions which I have told you earlier. So, that has been demonstrated in the next circuit. You can observe that in my next circuit. Observe this uh, blue line. Now, I am pressing 1 S 1 uh, wall uh, air from the source gets connected to 1 to 2 okay? and uh, 1 gets connected to 2 here in the shuttle valve and the other side other port gets blocked. If you observe this here, this is blocked. So, this is blocked here. So, no air is allowed to move to the vent through the valve. So, this is an advantage this is an advantage, no air leak will be there. The air which is given will go directly to the control element through this path through a R valve. So, this helps you to avoid uh, the leakage through the other valve and your cylinder will function correctly as per the requirement at any pressure variation, small pressure vari variations also the circuits can function without any problem. So, if I take now the other valve, if you use the other valve, now if you press 1 S 2. So, the 1 gets connected to 2 here and this valve will come and seals this port here, here and the air gets connected like this. So, the from here to here. Right? So, at that time this will not work. So, uh, that is how we can use the R valve in the appropriate place in the middle to avoid leakages and allow the circuit to function without any problem. Now, we will move on to the second type of valve, second type of logical valve that is two pressure valve, which is also called as twin pressure valve sometimes. So, symbolically it is represented like this, if you observe these symbols you can see one, one on either side and there is a spool element in the middle. So, which is uh, closes and opens with the help of these two things. So, when you pass an air here, so this gets sealed here. So, both sealed here and this seals this end. So, no air will flow. If you pass this side, this seals here. Okay, this gets sealed here. So, this comes and sits here okay. and uh, at that time this blank will seal here. Again no air will flow. Suppose, if you give air from both ends, so from here and as well as here. So, then the spool will be in the middle like what you are seeing a gap here. So, the air gets connected to the tube. So, the same thing which has been demonstrated here in the sketch, if I give air through one port that is through this port 1, so air will not go to the 2 output. So, uh, it is sealed here, if you observe it, it, it is sealed here and this seals this side. So, no air flows takes to 2 path 2. So, so uh, in and logic, you have to press both. So, this, this as well as this. If you give air from these two input elements, both the inputs are given and because both the inputs are given. So, this and this both are pressed, then the air will passes through the passage which is created here. If you observe here, there is a passage which has been created okay, and uh, that air links to 2. Okay. That means, if you give both the inputs, you can get the output. If you give one input, no output can be obtained. So, this is the function of the and valve. Now, if you use the and valve in the circuit or without using a and valve, you can also construct. So, but what is the difference, how it looks in the circuit side, I will just try to explain with this slide. If you do not use the and, and valve or and gate valve, so then you, you have to take the input elements like this, 
here in this case there are three input elements S1, S2, S3 which are connected in series to the source. So, that means that means if I press this air will flow from here to here and then if I press this air will continue further and then press S1 will continue here and air will go to the wherever you want. So, that means one after the other a chain like thing has to be established. So, by pressing all the input elements. So, this becomes unconventional sometimes to have these kinds of uh, connections and get this done in the pneumatic uh, low cost automation circuits. For that reason, we always again suggest you to use an and valve in the middle and try to connect elements in the way you want, but logically you can get the same output in a better manner than this. So, now I am demonstrating that here with this example S1, S2, S3 there are 3 in S1, S2, S3 same thing I am trying to use S1, S2, S3 I am putting it like this in this manner and the source is here it is coming to one of this valve, one of this valve and one of this all the these are closed normally closed valves. So, uh, push button type spring written 3 by 2 way uh, input element valves these uh, valves are input element valves. So, now if I press any uh, two of this I should be able to get now just observe here if I press S1 if I press S1 so that is air will connect like this that will give a supply to this port but this port is not given no output can go to this bar. So, if I press S2 also if I press S1 and as well as S2 that is and so one gets connected to two here also. So, I am getting air from this side and as well as from this side that means both the valves are being actuated now this gives an output and out, out, output will go to this R valve uh, this end valve and uh, now if I press S3 already one input signal is been given now if I press S3 so one gets connected to two here and the air will come to this port. So, again you are getting both the signals to this valve which gives you the final output. So, I will try to repeat this uh, the logics here it is easy only you can observe. So, if you press S1 and S2 I am giving signal to this side and as well as this side at that time I get my uh, this I get my this side. So, this side and this side which gives you an output at this side. Now, one input is already there. If I press an another that is S3, I am giving input to this side. So, means both signals has been come has been reached here in the lo uh, uh, and logic valve. So, we are going to get an output now here the final output. So, in this fashion you can connect you can connect your unlogical valve the way you want in the pneumatic circuit to achieve your logical conditions which is required for you. Now, I want to demonstrate one by one how the unlogical valve fits in the circuit and how it works. So, we will observe that now use of two pressure valve in the circuit how to make use of the two pressure valve in the circuit. As I told there should be a condition here to minimum condition and means you and me means there are two here. So, I am taking one S1 I am taking one S1 one thing and the another one is one S2. So, I am taking two input elements 
one is a push button type and the another one is a roller type so if i press 1s1 and as well as 1s2 so then i am giving input to this side and to this side that results in an output line 2 energized means air will go to that line and it reaches the final control element 5 by 2 way final control element with spring written type so as i am giving you set signal here the position gets switched so air will gets connected from here to here so let me remove this now so air gets connected from 1 to 4 1 to 4 so uh, uh, at that point of time air will come to this side air will come to this side and this side air gets exhausted will move to the exhaust you are going to make a forward motion if you take out your hand means if you take out these two signals if you break this signal and break this signal that means if you take out your hand back and make the roller to come back okay without pressed so then automatically the 5 by 2 valve do as it has a spring it pushes the valve to the normal position and uh, the cylinder will retract back cylinder will retract so that is it will come to this position it will come to this position in the in the current position now air will move to this path and this side is get go go to vent 5 so your uh, cylinder is going to retract so forward motion and retract motion retract is done using a spring forward is done using unlogic that is 1s1 and 1s2 in this case observe this uh, uh, slide if you give one input nothing will happen because signal is not reaching this point air is not reaching the signal point okay so if i give both if i give press 1s2 also that means 1s1 is pressed and 1s2 is also pressed at that condition here also here also air will go and you will going to get the output here to this line so this is the line charged now and now the signal will go to the final control element which in turn it takes its position in the current position means when in the signaling position one gets connected to four so air will move to this path and this will move forward if you take out this two this will retract so this is how the function of the uh, unlogical uh, valve will be working in in the circuit so it sits in the middle between the input elements and gives you the corresponding logic that you are uh, want that you are expecting the other valve which is commonly used is not gate valve so which is uh, uh, generally used to invert the signal input so mean to negate the signal for example a normally closed timer or a counter can be converted to a normally open and vice versa it is essentially a normally 3 by 2 way valve if you observe this it is a uh, 3 port and 2 position valve pilot operated directional control valve with a spring written type combination input signal is applied uh, applied at the pilot port here and output is taken from the port 2 so that means you are going to give input here and takes the output here so this is uh, the not gate valve which is used to negate the function normally so this can be used in the circuit as and when required 
so far I have discussed R wall that is also called as shuttle wall and wall which is also called as twin pressure wall or two pressure wall and I have covered not gate wall ok. So, which is to used to negate the function. So, now uh, how do we use this valves? So, grouping of set and reset signals we can make with respect to the conditions that you are expecting. So, that means you can have condition 1, 2, 3, condition 4, 5, 6. So, you are giving forward with few conditions that is 1, 2 and 3 met. You are going to get the uh, forward. Again, if you want to get the reverse, again few conditions are there. So, that is condition 4, 5, 6 is uh, met. So, then the 1 to port will receive the air and it resets and the actuator will retract back. So, normally logical valves are being used here to create a conditions and if the conditions are satisfied you are going to get the output. So, this is a important thing in any low cost automation concepts. For example, now I am trying to explain one of the low cost automation circuit which is uh, deployed on a small uh, mission, small mission in an industry. So, let us now take that example clamping device. So, we will understand this function first what, what is the purpose of this low cost automation that we are trying to establish. Here uh, we are trying to clamp an object, we are trying to clamp an object and then drill on the object. So, there is a fixture which clamps the object and after it clamps the object is being machined means a drilling operation is being done. And once the drilling spindle goes back, so we are uh, asking the uh, system to unclamp. So, that means I have a one cylinder, I have a one cylinder which is being used to clamp and unclamp and another one machine which drills and goes back, a combination of a machine and a clamping and unclamping setup. So, now we will not worry about the machine part now, I have not shown the machine here. I am only showing the circuit part of the clamping and unclamping, but however I am taking the condition of the drilling machine to retract the cylinder that means to unclamp the cylinder. So, I am considering the conditions of the drilling machine also into consideration to unclamp the object. So, now let us observe now how this circuit will work. Clamp PB, clamp PB means there are two push button switches has been taken that is earned log uh, uh, R logic has been taken here with an R logic here. So, that means you can use your uh, left PB or right PB to give a signal to this port. This is what? This is an and valve. This is an and valve. So, means you are getting only uh, air to this port, but not to this port. So, here we have given an another condition for the uh, system. So, what is that condition? So, the condition is work should be kept on the table, work should be kept on the table means object should be work piece should be on the clamping table. So, that means if the object is present this is going to press this roller, this roller is pressed symbolically we give this symbol for the pressing condition at that point of time when you place the object due to the load itself this gets pressed. 
So, one gets connected to two here, one gets connected to two here. So, that allows the air to this side means if the object is kept on the clamping table, you are going to get this signal. If the operator presses either left button or the right button, any one will result in giving the signal, air signal to this side. Means in that condition, this and this both get satisfied. So, for an unlogical valve, so this gives an output and sends a signal to 1, 4. So, the 1, 4 final control element will give switch the position and air gets connected to 4 and air will move to this and go to the cylinder. So, this results in clamping means to clamp now to clamp I should have two condition operator operator has to operator has to press press one of this ok. So, either this or this has to be pressed ok and and work piece should be kept on the table this work should be kept on the. So, then only we are, we are going to clamp it means the condition is operator presses but however, if the object is present on the table, then the clamping will occur. Otherwise, if the object is not there, operator presses, the clamping will not occur. That means, it gives sense to the system now. So, it gives a good sense to the system without a object, even if the operator presses to clamp, the clamping will not take place because no meaning to the clamping if object is not there on the table. What is that you are going to clamp? No use, just you are moving and it is a waste. Okay? So, that means with this condition we are uh, making the system little bit foolproof. So, that means without a failures, if this is there then only the system will, will work. Okay? A kind of a Pokayoke concepts you can call. So, if the things are there, then only we can go to the next step. Okay? That is the concept that being deployed here. So, now clamping is already been done now with all these conditions we have done the clamping. We have achieved this with this help. So, this is the circuit which is helping you to clamp. Okay? Now, to unclamp what is the condition for the unclamp? So, the condition here is, condition here is, this is the part you have to uh, observe now. Condition for unclamping is this. So, operator should press unclamping button and also, and also, and unlogic is being used, and also the drilling spindle should have done drilling and moved back. So, means another another drilling machine which we have kept here. Na? So, that has drilled and moved back. So, we are ensuring that the drilling machine has done completely drilling and moved back. Only then the unclamp of the object will happen. So, that means no drill bit will break inside the object because every time we are ensuring that the drilling is been done and then retracted, then unclamp will happen. So, while unclamp, when you unclamp the work piece may shake and you are leaving the grip of the work piece. So, due to that the uh, drill bit may break, but we are avoiding that. We are avoiding that how? We are ensuring that this moves back. Only after this reaches its this end. So, then only it is it allows the unclamping. So, this is an interesting thing which saves your lot of uh, disadvantages. Uh, we, we have now discussed uh, the industrial application of uh, logic 
So, that means we have used R and N logics in, in the way you want with certain conditions which is being considered as a basic requirements in the machines. So, uh, so the intelligence of the machine has been improved up here. So, that is why we call uh, pneumatics and hydraulics as one of the major source for the industries to automate. So, means by using either hydraulics or pneumatics, you can automate your process to a certain extent. So, uh, and also pneumatics is referred to as a low cost because compared to hydraulics, so pneumatic uh, hardwares are less costly and the requirement of the cost is also less. But only drawback is the force level re, uh, generated by the pneumatics is not comparable with hydraulics. With the hydraulics, you can work up to 5000 tons, whereas with pneumatics, you can only work with uh, 50 kilo Newtons max. So, this is, how, this is the major difference one has to understand between the hydraulics and pneumatics and understand the basics of pneumatics very well so that you can deploy that at your industry levels. When you go to industries also you can do small small improvements using pneumatic circuits and that will enormously improve your productions in the shop floors and also you are uh, creating a smartness in the machines. So, this is how you can create your uh, smartness to the machine by incorporating AND and R valves as per the requirement and develop. So, this machine is not a simple machine now, it is a low cost automation machine with a, its own knowledge of identifying that the work is there on the table and work and uh, also ensures that the drilling bit, drill bit will not break. So, that by ensuring that the drilling machine is completely retracted back. So, this is uh, an interesting one has to learn such kind of uh, 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 use of valves in the appropriate methodology to create their circuits. Now, I will uh, demonstrate one more circuit to give you a little bit broader uh, experience with the session. Uh, so, I will demonstrate one more circuit which is referred to as distribution of balls. So, here the balls are being fed and that ball will move here and fed to the next station by using a pneumatic cylinder. So, there are two more openings you can switch it as you require. So, the switching is done uh, by this pushing the balls to the respective is done with the help of a pneumatic cylinder. Read this statement, what is a requirement? In all the cases, reading this complete statement given by the requirement department or by the customer makes sense. You have to read that carefully. So, if you read this, balls are distributed from a gravity magazine, that is this one. Okay. Uh, via a distributor shaft by to a two packing stations. There are two packing stations. Okay. Uh, the signal from the return stroke must be capable of given by the machine operator. Means machine operator will press a, a press a wall to give a signal for the return stroke of this cylinder. So, initially it is like this, initially it is like this, he will has to give a signal to retract it back. So, that is the meaning of this. Okay. So, the operator, the operator can give by either a manual push button or foot operated means this is an R val, R logic. So, here is the R logic, here you can see R logic is been given or logic has been given. If you read the statement, you can understand. So, then if you read further, the advanced stroke of the piston, that is this one, the advanced, you have retracted it. So, advanced stroke of this piston is triggered by the piston rod. 
means triggered means a self triggering. So, that means it has to press a limit switch kind of thing which is at the uh, other end. Okay? So, it has to trigger by its own. So, triggered by the piston rod when the rare most end position is reached means when it is reaches here self triggering has to happen with the help of a limit switch. So, uh, there is a condition here the advanced stroke of the piston is triggered by the piston rod when the rare most end is reached when it is reached it has to trigger and the piston must execute a return stroke only when the, when the balls are present there is an and logic here also so it means there is an r logic and an logic so when you read the statement you have to split where all the logical words are there after reading you have to identify that and ensure that uh, this can be achieved using the large appropriate logical valves in the fashion so now if you observe this circuit we have incorporated uh, the statement what is required by designing this circuit. So, if you observe the air source is here FRL unit and this is input line. Input line has been connected to S1, hand PB, leg PB and a ball sensor. So, the observation here is now to make the stroke we have a S1 here this is S1. So, S1 is this, S1 is this. So, that this means this is already installed in the line of the cylinder. The meaning of that is this limit switch is installed here. So, that is the indication, that is the indication. Means if it is here, it, is, it will when it is at the back end, it is pressed. So, when it is pressed, the rod is at the back end. So, S1 gets pressed due to that. So, air will move from 1 to 2 here, air will move from 1 to 2 that allows the air to pass to the 1 4 set signal. So, the air gets connected. So, this will move the cylinder forward. So, already as it is pressed, so this is allowing a signal to the control valve and making its own forward due to this condition. So, now to retract to take it back. So, what is the condition we have? There are uh, hand button and a leg pedal. If the operator presses any one of this means there should be an R wall in the middle. There should be an R wall in the middle. So, that means uh, the operator is allowed to do this or this. So, any one of this if he is doing, then the output will go to this and well and one more signal, one more signal is ball sensor. If the ball is present, if the ball is present, then, on, then you will going to get this signal because if the ball is present, uh, it will going to press this, if the ball is present. Okay? So, then then this gets pressed. So, then you will get a signal to the reset side. So, that will shift this position and come back to the normal, it will start retracting. Means, forward and retraction with the help of, with the help of uh, R logic and N logic okay? and with some conditions as explained in the previous slide. So, if you observe the statement and the circuit, it is, uh, it is meeting all the requirements of this statement. There is an R, R we have met here, we have taken here, R combination was explained in the statement that we have met here and, and, and is with the pin sensor, okay? uh, that is with the ball, okay? that has been demonstrated here, ball sensor. Okay. So, if you uh, take back here the condition to operate, the condition to operate is uh, this self triggering. So, self triggering is we have kept the limit switch S1 at the back end of the 
cylinder. So as soon as it moves back, it presses and moves forward. So that means, so th all the three conditions which are stated in the statement has been covered here. So this has been covered with an AND, this has been covered here with an R, okay, and the self triggering, the triggering, okay. So this also been covered. So depending upon the statement, we are going to use the statement, use the statement and make use of our uh, uh, circuit elements. Here the circuits elements are input elements and R logical valves and AND logical valves along with the final control element which is in turn connected to the actuator through a flow control valve. So here uh, uh, flow control valves with unidirectional flow control valves are being fitted so that you can control your speed as per your requirement. You can make slow or fast based on the settings of these two valves. So I'll, uh, this is how and and all valves are being used in the circuit part. Thank you.